morning, everyone. Um, I've really come to greet you and to pass on a message uh, from the Methodist Church as a whole. And just to say that in this last week, uh, Jackie and Gary's suspension was lifted uh, by the church. And um, that concludes uh, a, a very difficult period for all of us here at Grace Point. There has been some quite disturbing gossip that has been doing the rounds. And uh, so I'm going to appeal to all of you um, who are prone to gossip, which is all of us, please switch off the plug, not just at times of load shedding, but whenever you have the need to uh, enter into discussion about other people's personal lives, can I ask you please to desist? And apropos that, to welcome you this morning, Jackie, into our worship. And as you resume your responsibilities, may God's Spirit inspire you. Good morning, church. I extend my greeting to that of Paul and welcome everyone to our worship service. It is so good to have more than the usual culprits present in the sanctuary. Um, it's, it's such an overwhelming and a pleasant feeling. So welcome. I know some continue to follow the services online. And if you are new to Grace Point and to everyone, may this worship experience be heartwarming for all of us. Let us pray as we go into a time of worship. Lord God, thank you that your presence is always with us. Thank you especially that in this moment you welcome us again into a sacred space where we can let go of everything and just be in your presence. May the ambience that occupies our space of worship be glorious. Lord, we come now to lift praises unto you. Yeah. Bless this, our time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, shall we all stand as we go into a time of worship in song? Hey, everyone. It's really great to be with you. I just wanted to give us a little bit of context uh, just due to load shedding for everyone who is in the sanctuary. Uh, the words, unfortunately, will not be able to be projected up onto the side screens. As soon as the electricity is back, we'll have the side screens back on. Cool. That's it. Yeah. 
blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. so grateful to be here this morning God that we know that your mercy has kept us Lord during these trying times and that we can still be in this building and worship Lord 
despite the difference in the way that we worship, God, you are still here. You are working through us and loving through through it all, God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy always. Thank you for keeping us still in a time of misunderstanding. Thank you for keeping us aware of your glory and your light. Thank you for showing us that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, God, that the focus is only you, Jesus. And we know, God, during this time that you are holding us and molding us to be better versions of ourselves for your kingdom, Jesus. So we give our souls to you and every beat that our heart beats, God, is for you only. Our focus and our lives are for you. We exalt you, God, in the highest.
So, Lord God, as we come into your presence this morning, we thank you that we are called not to just exist in your presence in a passive way, but to go and to be amongst a world that is aching and hurting and to discover even the places in ourselves that need your presence. And so continue to journey with us, God, as we move closer to the cross during our time of Lent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, would you please take a seat, and it is good to be with you this morning. Just a few moments um, that I'd just like to share with you um, before I hand over to Mohadi, who will pray for the offering. So, um, you know, that I've held to, and it's from Romans 8 that speaks about God using every situation for our good. And not everything is good, and not everything is from God, but everything has the potential to be transformed by God. And so that's really the scripture that I will hold to um, for the rest of my life. And it is going to be something really new, um, because although everything is the same, um, everything is different. And so I'd like to just thank the church, the broader church, for the space that I've been given in the last few months just to spend time just recalibrating and thinking. Thank you to those that have been really supportive of us during this time. We've had to lean into a lot of people, my colleagues, Paul and Similo and those around us. We've really had to lean into them and for friends And for the space that the Grace Point community, the staff, the broader community have given us. Um, As you know, I met Gary when I was 17, so this is an unbelievably hard journey. But it is also a journey that I now will walk. And I think when Paul spoke about giving the privacy, that's really helpful. So thank you so much for that. Um, And thank you so much for the support. Um, Gary is in America. I've spoken with him on a few occasions. He's happier. He's um, adjusting to a new life. We both are. And so um, thank you for that. Our children are also doing better. And so we'll journey in this together. But I'm also aware of the fact that we're part of a story, so not to make us the focus So thank you very much to the eldership, the society stewards, the leaders, and those that have supported us during this time. Would you mind if I prayed? We thank you, God, that you journey with us through all of life. Into eternity, we carry the experiences of this life, the good ones and the bad. And we discover, God, that there is a presence of yours that is promised in every season. And I pray, God, that as I continue to walk and our church continues to walk in a different season, that we would always be able to look back and see your presence shaping, healing, and guiding. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Thanks so much, Mukhari. Thank you, Jackie, and welcome back. It's lovely to have you back. Um, Again, a warm welcome, extensive welcome to all of you who have been able to come today together with us in the sanctuary. And to those who are online, we welcome them, and we hope you all enjoy the service. Um, as we prepare for the offering, we remember that we serve a generous God, a God who encourages us, who, uh, who encourages us to continue to give, and in doing so, we become more like Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for Your life and glory. We know that You are a God of all possibilities, 
We thank you for your grace, your abundance, and provision. We remember that Jesus is Emmanuel through the gift of his Holy Spirit, our comforter, our ever-present friend. We give thanks to the tithes and offerings that we will re have received through the week and will continue to receive. We ask you to bless these gifts and that these offerings will be used wisely to build your kingdom. We remember those who are experiencing financial, financial difficulties more now than ever. We pray for those who are infected and affected by the COVID virus, those who have passed, and those who have lost loved ones. Continue to give them strength during these times. We pray for our leaders in the church and in the country. Give them wisdom and discernment to make the best decision and to lead with integrity. We pray for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi everyone, so glad you could join us today on this beautiful Sunday, either online or in person, we're so glad you're with us. Um, don't forget our Lent services happening every Wednesday at 6pm and uh, also we have Palm Sunday coming up on the 28th of March. Please join us for that very special service here at Grace Point. So let's find out what's happening this morning with our Gen Now ministry, which is Kids Gap and Edge. Good morning and welcome to our Genau platform. For our Kids Online, which is our 0 to 9 year olds, we are currently busy with our Lens series called Up, Up and Away. Parents, please direct your kids to our webpage where they will find everything they will need to enjoy their lesson and time with us. There is the Doodle Studio, worship, and of course the lesson. For our grade fours to sixes, our GAP ministry has a lot to offer. Ilza and our team has put together an amazing lesson on a Sunday and they also have GAP Connect on Zoom on a Friday and on a Sunday. And please don't forget, Ilza posts daily some devotionals for you on WhatsApp Connect. For our teenagers, 13 to 18 year olds, Claudia and his team has also an amazing program for you. Please go to their website and see what they have to offer you. Please remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Well, that's all from us today. We'll see you back here next week with more information from our Gen Now team. Bye. Hi, everyone. This is Cody, and I'm Jean. And together we are Info at Grace Point. If you would like to join a home group or a Bob group, 
or if you have any other queries for us, don't hesitate to email at info at gracepoint.co.za or you can always phone us on 702-4600. We will try and answer all of your queries for you. Hope you all have a good day and really look forward to seeing you joining a home group or a bob group or getting involved perhaps as a volunteer would be really great. Thank you all. Have a good day. Don't forget to connect with us on WhatsApp Connect and uh, you can sign up by sending us a hello if you haven't signed up before. We'll send you all the information from week to week. Well, that's what's happening on GPTV this week. Um, enjoy the rest of the service and we hope you have a good Sunday. I was wondering if the children could make their way down and then we're going to social distance on the carpet. Can you quickly run down all the children? Quickly, quickly come. <laughs> all right. Just make sure you stick, uh, stretch your hands out because remember that's how far we have to be from each other. Come kids, come quickly. There you go. You can come closer. There you go. That's right. Quickly stretch out your hands, stretch out your hands. Okay, perfect. Let's sit down. Fantastic. Okay, good morning everyone again and welcome today. And so we are going to sp speak about anger, aren't we? Yes. And I'm wondering if you could give us a little bit of more insight on anger, please. Awesome. A good morning to everyone that is joining us today here at Grace Point, but also online. This is a special moment where we're going to zoom in to say, to look at what today's service could also mean for our children our Gap kids, and also our youth that are gathered here and also at home. And so last week, for those who were part of the Edge experience on a Sunday, you would have remembered that we spoke about the idea of ending the cycle of hurt through forgiveness. But today we're then going to zoom in on some of the feelings that we go through when people offend us. And one of those feelings is anger. And I'm going to use this balloon to demonstrate what actually happened. So I'm going to try something I haven't tried in a long while, and that is to blow this, um, hopefully till something happens to it. So I'm going to need you guys to really, really, really cheer me on and help me get this uh, filled as much as we can. And so we all have different moments of offense. So sometimes you might be at school and someone says something really hurtful to you. What happens at that moment is you store this in. And you hold on to this feeling. And then, later on, maybe while you're on your way home, you hear that someone wrote something really bad about you on social media. And that obviously irritates you, and that obviously offends you. And so what happens? You store that feeling in again. And then later on, you find out that even your friend was part of that Facebook thread. Now, we all want our friends to be defending us, and so it kind of sucks to hear that your friend spoke about you. And then, while you are resting, trying to sort all of this out, mom calls you to come do finish up a chore that you have not finished up. And for some of us who are in kids' church, it might be you finding out that your brother, your sister, has is maybe using your favorite toy that you wanted to play with at that particular moment, and then you get angry. And then, what then happens is, maybe you drop your brother's cell phone. And we all know how teenagers can get with their cell phones, right? And so, at that moment, your brother says something really hurtful, and then you hold on to that hurt. And we are reminded at that time how much it does not help us to hold on to hurt. That's very good. Isn't it amazing? And that's exactly what we do. We bottle everything up. Now, on the other hand, boys and girls, what happens if we, we just speak out? We just say what we feel. We just do what we do. And we just post what we want to. So I've got another one here. So I'm just going to put my mic down for one moment. So guys, now just imagine all the things inside of this tube is all the anger that I'm feeling. 
that was in that balloon. And so what I do is I react to it. That means I do something about it. So I go and I hit my brother. I post more angry posts on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I then go and I go and I tell lies about someone that has hurt me. And then I realize, oh my gosh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Because now that I've said it, now that I've done it, now that I've posted it, maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe, oh, and now I'm going to get into trouble. And now there's big word consequences. And now I try to put this back. But guys, do you think we can put this back again in here? Can I put it back? No. So once I have said something, once I have done something or posted something, it's out there. And I can't do anything anything about it. It's like this toothpaste in this little bowl, and I can never, ever get it back. So what do you think we can do about this? I think the best thing to do is to find safe spaces where we can speak about our emotions yeah. and we can store how we feel without hurting anyone. That's right. And you know what? We have an amazing um, object lesson here for you. I'm going to ask Slawny to hold this for us. Now, I want you guys to imagine that this red stuff in here is all your anger. Can you see all the anger? Okay. And this bag is our safe space that Slawny has spoken about. This could be a safe place where you go to God and you pray and ask him to help you. It could be that you have a God moment with maybe a, a parent or with a gogo or with an aunt or maybe even your pastor at church or your, your youth pastor, your children's pastor. It doesn't matter as long as you find someone that can help you to create a safe space for you to speak about your anger and speak about those things that have hurt you. Because you see, boys and girls, when we do that, I want you to pay very close attention here. Look what happens when I have a safe space. Then you know what? Somebody can come and tell whatever they want. Can you turn it a little bit so that they can see? Look at that. All my anger stays inside. But I have spoken about those things that hurt me. I have shared whoops, all those things that have hurt me. Let me just push that one back. Here we go. And so then anybody can do whatever they want. I'm going to put some through here. And we would have a safe space where we can deal with this anger. We don't have to bottle it up like we did in the balloon. We don't have to react with it and feel sorry afterwards that we said it like the toothpaste. We can just have a very safe space where we can speak about it. Isn't that amazing? And see, I, all my anger is still inside. I have still been hurt, and there's still a lot of anger, but it's in a safe space. Isn't that amazing? Now, what happens if we don't forgive people or we don't go and talk about it? Well, firstly, we're going to have that balloon bursting, isn't it? But the other thing that will happen is that things will just start coming out. Can you lift it up a little bit so they can see? Look at that, boys and girls. All that anger comes out if I don't have a safe space to speak about it. So we want to encourage you today. Firstly, don't bottle up all your anger and your resentment. Don't do things that you will regret later on. Don't post. Don't send messages. And then lastly, find that safe space where you can speak about your anger, your, your sadness, your, your hurt, so that this mess doesn't happen. Is that good, everyone? So there we go. I think we helped them a lot with their anger. Well, we hope we did. And we will see you back next week. Is that good? Okay, you guys can all go back to your seats. Good morning again. I'm going to read to you um, passages. First of all, a passage in the First Testament in Leviticus, which um, 
gives the background to our um, passage this morning in Leviticus chapter 24, and we'll read from verse 17. If anyone takes the life of a human being, he must be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. If anyone injures his neighbor, whatever he has done must be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has injured the other, so he is to be injured. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a man must be put to death. You are to have the same law for the alien and the native born. I am the Lord your God. And then we read the section from the it's not the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, and we'll read from verse 33 to 48. Again you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath. That's the introduction. Then from verse 38, you have heard that it was said eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one kilometer, go with him two kilometers. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And then I read in Matthew chapter 27, selected verses. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes, casting lots. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, 
why have you forsaken me? This is the word of the Lord. Now, may I remind you, first of all, that we are in the season of Lent, and it is a time in which we are given an opportunity to really scrutinize the integrity of our relationship with God in Christ. To re-examine the covenants that we've made as God's people. And today we come, in this service, I'm really only going to be dealing with the first piece there from verse 38 to 42 in this service, and then in the next service at 10 o'clock I'll deal with the rest. But in this section we really are, if you can have at the back of your mind, the use of power. How do we engage with power? And so we start, first of all, by recognizing that power is dangerous on one level, and yet power is liberating at another level. The Israelites came out of Egypt where they had experienced huge abuse of power. They had no voice. They really almost had no identity. They were violated in their children, being murdered. And they cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard them in their gigantic vulnerability. And then they eventually, you know the story, but you've got to hold that story of their oppression in Egypt in your mind all the time because that oppression that they experienced in Egypt is exactly what could repeat itself in the nation when they had established themselves. And so many of the laws, in actual fact, seek quite deliberately to put checks and balances in place. So, if somebody bashed out your eye, you didn't have the right to kill them, no matter how much you might have felt like doing that. It was a need to balance justice properly. And so our law courts and our justice systems constantly seek to hold those two balances very, very carefully in place. But it's also obviously in our relationships with one another. You've heard them speaking about anger here to try and teach our young people how do they cope with anger. But you know how dangerous your anger can become. It can become the releasing place of your power so that ultimately when you have expended your anger, you've destroyed everything in the way. And in actual fact, the balances stand like that. What happened again this week in our nation at Wits University is exactly that. Is exactly that when the force of power is brought down to pull into control a situation that becomes frightening and ultimately people get killed. It was exactly the same as what happened in Marikana. And so in this teaching, Jesus says to each and every one of us, scrutinize your power very very, very carefully. And I want to introduce to you a completely new concept as the people who follow me. Recognize your power. And in recognizing your power, make the decision to turn the energy that is there in your anger 
into something that submits to the greater love of Christ. I mean, that passage right at the end, that verse, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, there are two things I just want to further say to you. The first thing is that these things that Jesus says do not resist an evil person. Someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. But according to the Old Testament, of course, it was if someone strikes you on the right cheek, beat him up. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. So if somebody says to you, you owe me, you pay me for what you owe me, every single cent, and I have the right to take your tunic. And so what you do is you pay the debt, and then you say, well, if it is so important for you to own my clothing, let me give you everything. Let me strip myself completely naked and stand before you, and then whose is the shame? And if someone forces you to go one kilometer, go with him too. Now, there was the right of people in power to force someone to carry their burden for one kilometer, but only one kilometer. So when you came to the end of the kilometer, by law, that person in power had to take back their burden and you had to be set free. But you come to the end of the kilometer and you say to the person, will you force me to do this? I'm now going to carry the kilometer, another kilometer, which will get you into trouble because you are now breaking the law. You understand? So the passage is not as submissive as you think. It does demand from each and every one of us to recognize that because of Christ, we have an inner value in ourselves that cannot be humiliated by other people. So, for instance, I took you to the place of the cross, which in a strange way is a place of profound dis empowerment. It's the place in which Jesus is completely stripped of dignity, stripped of even his life, and ultimately gets to the place where he is completely abandoned and even feels that he is abandoned by God himself. And yet, I need to say to you, as we reflect on that moment as an historical moment for the church, it is in actual fact probably the essential moment of life. It is the place that the church chooses to make the place, the central place of Christ's dignity. It is the place in which we find hope. It is the place in which we find release and empowerment in, in a completely paradoxical way. And in actual fact, as we look at the cross, it becomes the epicenter of the transformation of the entire world. Now I need to say to you, this passage is one of the passages that has been most controversial. We've just come through a history in South Africa, and it's in terms of the bigger spectrum, really very recent. And during the years of liberation struggle, the big issue that put itself onto the table was the issue of resistance. What exactly did resistance to evil look like? And so many, many people ultimately got to the point of saying, 
the only way in which we are going to solve the problems of injustice in this nation is if we take up arms. Is if we meet force with force. Is if we take up arms against the arms that are used against us. And it created huge, huge disruption, even within the church. This is one of the passages that is one of the most uncomfortable passages to deal with in Scripture because it says to us, if within our beings we are followers of Jesus Christ, we need to scrutinize the violence that rests within each and every one of us. The ability with our tongues to destroy. The ability with a gun to wipe out life, no matter how justified. Jesus calls that entire system that is so deeply entrenched and hallowed in governments and in states into question. You must know that this is one of the places where the church, in actual fact, parts company with a value system of many, many, many governments. And I'd like to say to you, even our own. You don't have to be a wizard to travel between Johannesburg and Pretoria and along the side of the roads. You will see places where there are armaments and where there is a whole huge budget that is set aside to defend ourselves. And here, Jesus introduces a new way of being. You know that in the early church, there was a belief that if you could be a martyr for Jesus. That was the highest destiny that you could achieve as a human being on earth. If you were found worthy to suffer for Christ, that was the highest accolade that could come your way. And so I want to suggest to you awkwardly, that as we prepare for our journey to the cross, we prepare ourselves to scrutinize those parts of our lives which are violent, which reaffirm that as true power. Not recognizing that Jesus in his finest moment of power abandoned all so that you and I could have life. Amen. Let us pray. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. And it is as you disinvest yourself of your right to revenge, O oh God, that you open the window for life, for forgiveness for us. Amazing grace. Enable us to become, Lord, those in society who insist on the humble way, who insist on the giving way, who insist on the sacrificial love that transforms hopelessness into eternal life. We pray especially for the broken in our world, O oh Lord. 
those who have been diminished by illness, those who have been diminished by violence. We pray especially at, the t at this time for the situation in all our universities where there is huge vulnerability. But we also pray for the other kind of violence that comes from abject poverty, that comes from a greed that grabs and grabs and grabs and demands more and more so-called power that is worthless. We pray for those who are caught in the trap of victimization because of greed. We pray especially for people who have lost loved ones. And to today we pray for Tandeka and her entire family in their deep grief at the loss of their child. We pray especially for the Nelson family in the loss of their father. And we pray that in the brokenness and sadness of their lives, they may discover in your care and compassion hope and light and peace. We pray for ourselves, Lord, in the week that lies ahead. In those places where we exercise our power in relationships with our children, in relationships within the church, in relationships in our responsibilities at work, in relationships politically, we pray that you give us the mind of Christ. For we ask this in his name and for his sake. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest droughts and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ. the ground his body lay light on the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost Grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his end till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. We're going to stand as we receive the final benediction this morning. And even if you're home, maybe it'll be a good idea if you stand with us now. And so we pray, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, 
no powers, no height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it is in this love, Lord God, that we seek to be the presence of Christ to this world. Now, in Christ we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, friends. We'll see you next Sunday. And don't forget our Wednesday services at 6 o'clock. Thank you.